Good evening, Ridgecrest family. Uh, good to be with you again. And I trust that as we draw to the end of this series, that you have been as tremendously encouraged as we have as a family, uh, covering so many aspects of just doing life on a very practical level uh, with the book of James. Many wonderful truths that we have all uh, been reminded of at this time. Topics like growing through trials. How does our faith work? Trusting God in all things and in all our circumstances. And today, I get to cover the idea that there is reward in our pursuit of perseverance in or towards our faith. But before we unwrap some of my thoughts on this short excerpt from chapter 5, uh, verses 7 to 11, I've asked Jesse, my eldest son, to read two pieces of fabulous literature, scripted by the brilliant mind known to many of our children as a dude called Greg. Right, Jesse? Through his series, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and this should hopefully set the scene on this idea of persevering in our faith. Thanks, Jesse. Tonight, when I told Mom and Dad I wanted to join the band, Mom was all for it. She was really excited I wanted to challenge myself and try something new, but Dad wasn't crazy about the idea. Dad said instruments are expensive and he, didn't, and he doesn't think I'll stick with them. But Mom said Roderick stuck with the drums, which I don't think really helped my case. That's when Dad brought up the piano. Two years ago, Mom saw me fooling around with one of those little electronic keyboards at the mall the week before Christmas. I liked it because it had all these buttons that made different sound effects. I think Mom got a little overexcited that I was showing interest in a musical instrument because on Christmas Eve, a truck rolled up to deliver a full-size piano. Judging by Dad's reaction, I don't think Mom checked with him before buying it. At first, I was excited about the piano, but when I realized it didn't make laser sounds and stuff like that, I lost interest real quick. <laughs> but Mom wasn't going to let me give up so fast. She hired a lady ma named Mrs. French to come to the house and give me private lessons twice a week. Mrs. French knew her stuff when it came to the piano, but I was a terrible student. Then we moved um, later on in the story, an instrument later. It says this. When I told Mom and Dad I was thinking about quitting the band, Dad said that wasn't an option. He said my instrument cost a lot of money and that I had to honour my commitment. He said I can't just quit something because it's hard. And if there's anything he's going to teach me, it's perseverance. Thanks, Jess. What we don't have time to finish today is that uh, for Greg and his father, things only got a little worse, as they often do in Greg's life. But what he absolutely demonstrated, whether for his own reasons or for the fear of his dad, was the idea of perseverance to the very end. So, boys and girls, if mom and dad will allow it, maybe uh, you can give uh, the story's end a bit of a read later on. So, straight on to that piece of scripture. And I have chosen to read the version today from the message as it offers a, a take just a little less familiar on a well-known portion of scripture. And it reads like this. Meanwhile, friends, wait patiently for the master's arrival. You see, farmers do this all the time, waiting for their valuable crops to mature, patiently letting the rain do its slow but sure work. Be patient like that. Stay steady and strong. The master could arrive at any time. Friends, don't complain about each other. A far greater complaint could be lodged against you, you know. The judge is standing around the corner. Take the old prophets as your mentors. They put up with anything, went through everything, and never once quit. All the time honoring God. What a gift it is to those who stay the course. You have heard of course, of Job's staying power, and you know how God brought it all together for him at the end. That's because God cares right down to the very last detail. This all comes to a lovely crescendo in verses 10 and 11. But as James builds to that truth, he reminds us that part of being a Christian, 
this road with many points of suffering and pain and scars is that we are to, in spite of those things, those trials, wait patiently for God to deliver on his promises. We know this from many places in scripture, that our God will deliver on his promises, always. He does not sometimes feel like it, and sometimes not. Uh, he does not, at the end of three weeks, feel like it. Sometimes an extra two, and even in many cases, enduring an extension through, <laughs> through stage four lockdown or beyond. You see, God always fulfills or makes sure that his promises are fulfilled. For me, these scriptures talk to the ultimate promise for the Christian faith. And we'll get to that in a moment. But perhaps in preparation for that, we can reflect on a few of the other promises kept in his word. Just to remind us of who our God is, our Savior, our Lord, our King of Kings, the one and the only, the Alpha and the Omega. And here are a few of them that I'm sure many of you, in fact, as I read through them, can recite by heart. Isaiah 40, uh, verses 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Isaiah 41, verses 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will hold you with my righteous right hand. John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Joshua 1 verses 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And Psalm 27 verse 1, also one of my favorites, the Lord is my light and my salvation, and because of this, whom shall I fear? It's not amazing for so many of us, certainly in my case, that even though we know these verses of scripture, and in many cases, even though they sit in frames on our walls, that we often flake away as easily as the rest of the world does. You see, family, the word perseverance already gives us the foresight that this walk is not going to be an easy one. All we have to do is see who James references here. He talks about Job, who suffered great loss and faced many, many trials and tribulations. The prophets of the day, who wait for it, went through and put up with pretty much everything and anything as they looked to bring honor to him. James says to us, look at them. Look at their stories. Persistence in doing something despite its difficulty or delay in achieving its ultimate success. Persistence Perseverance is tenacity, it's determination, and it's the absolute resolve. Why all of this, you may ask? Certainly, why all of this, I ask? You see, church, the world is watching. It's watching to see if we walk our talk, waiting to see if we hold on to the promises and trust our Lord to deliver on his word. As we close this time off, we see that James talks of the farmer who waits for the rain. And in other uh, v versions of scripture, if you read them, um, he talks about not just the first rain, but also them waiting patiently for the second, suggesting that he knows that once the first rain comes, so does the second. Ultimately, we get to enjoy persevering in our faith with many promises from his word. Some of those that I've already read to you. But in this chapter, we are reminded of the one greatest promise. It is this promise that he is coming and he is coming soon. Sure, as these scriptures read, the judge is at the door. But so is your Jesus, with his scarred hands opening wide. And he stands there asking you, will you let me in?
May we persevere in our faith, patiently waiting for the purpose of being his light in this dark world. And, to, and until that day, that glorious day, when we will be reunite, reunited with him, united with him, singing his praises face to face in his presence in glory. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. Amen. Church, and as we close that time of devotion together, perhaps the words of this song uh, don't ring truer now than they have ever before. And until that day, that beautiful day in glory that those scriptures promise, uh, it's perfect for us to sing this song as a reminder that everything is beautiful, made right and pure and good in His time. Amen. Just one